What's on, dude? Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, I don't really have anything to preface this video with, so let's just jump right into it. Max Jacobson was born July 3rd, 1900 in the Gordon Brombo Bromberg German Empire. He earned his medical degree from the Friedrich Wilhelm University of Berlin. Now it's called the Humboldt University of Berlin. Max was of Jewish descent and had to flee Nazi Germany in 1936. He went to the U.S. and established an office on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Max was known for his miracle tissue regenerator shots that contained amphetamine, amphetamines, animal hormones, bone marrow enzymes, human placenta, painkillers, steroids, and multivitamins. So there's a lot. So basically though, it was speed, if we're being real. Uh, most of the shots, they weren't like all the same, but they would give the recipient boundless energy and make them more productive and have like more pleasurable lives. Some of his clients were John F. Kennedy, Lauren Bacall, Ingrid Bergman, Humphrey Bogart, Marlene Dietrich, Eddie Fisher, Judy Garland, Hedy Lamar, Liza Minnelli, Marilyn Monroe, Elvis Presley, Nelson Rockefeller, Elizabeth Taylor, and Tennessee Williams, plus like many more. These were just the names that were like most popular. I mean, a lot of actresses, some singers. Um, I mean, they're like basically all actors but um Hedy Lamar she was a very she's a very interesting gal she was a singer or excuse me not a singer it's on my head for some reason now um she wasn't a singer but she was an actress and actually she helped develop the technology that basically gives us wi-fi so she's a real one for that but she got like absolutely zero credit for it a few of the people that quit or excuse me, a few of the people quit because of bad reactions and debilitating addictions to the amphetamine. If the shots are taken over a long period of time, the drug produces symptoms resembling paranoid schizophrenia. Mental depression can last weeks or months during the withdrawal period. Some of the patients said that the treatment he was giving them wrecked their lives and destroyed their careers. One of Max's clients died of what the medical examiner called acute amphetamine poisoning. However, the patients were rarely told that the mixture had anything in it besides vitamins and hormones. He wouldn't make it clear which patients got amphetamines and which, if, if any, didn't. In September of 1960, when JFK was still a senator, he first visited Dr. Jacobson just shortly before the 1960 presidential election debates. Some of the potential side effects of the shots were hyperactivity, impaired judgment, nervousness, and wild mood swings. When JFK was warned about the side effects and the fact that the Food and Drug Administration reports about what was in Jacobson's shots, he said reportedly, I don't care if it's horse piss, it works. JFK used the shots for severe bouts of back pain. Max would even frequently go to the White House and treat JFK and Jackie with his shots. He would even on some occasions travel with them, like he was part of their entourage. In 1961, he went with JFK to Vienna for the summit meeting with Khrushchev and gave the president injections while there. Later on, it was observed that JFK's presidential decisions greatly improved, especially during the Cuban Missile Crisis and other events in 1963, once he quit getting shots and started getting actual medical treatments. So once he was done, he like, miraculously, was able to think more clearly. Crazy. Dr. Nasser Gamey, who studied Kennedy's medical records, concluded that there was a, a correlation. It is not causation, but it may not be coincidence either. I feel like he could have said that in a much less confusing way. An extensive inquiry was done over his client list, and it was discovered that he had over 100 clients in ranking positions such as government, journalism, finance, industry, society, and several entertainment fields who could not be confirmed. It's unclear whether or not the Kennedys or any other specific patient received amphetamine. It was reported by Dr. Jacobson's office that he would buy amphetamine at 80 grams per month on average, which is enough to make 100 fairly strong doses of 25 milligrams every single day. According to the Federal Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs, which has investigated Dr. J Jacobson's at different times over almost like five years, um, a review by the agency of the doctor's records showed that a substantial quantity 
quantity of amphetamines he had purchased was unaccounted for. The Bureau ordered a seizure of all controlled drugs in Dr. Jacobson's possessions, possession in 1969. Of course, he contested in a suit, but nothing really happened. Patients could go to Dr. Jacobson's practice at all hours of the day or night. Even sometimes they would go to the, his house. Mickey Mantle started getting treated by Dr. Jacobson in late September of 1961 for a case of the flu. Jacobson, oh, by the way, he is a baseball player for the Yankees at the time. Jacobson injected Mickey in the hip and that caused a severe abscessing septic infection at the injection site. This caused Mickey to be hospitalized and the incident threatened his baseball career. He was sidelined from the Yankees while they were playing in the 1961 AL East pennant. He was kind of self-destructing during this time so that might have had something to do with it, of course. By the late 1960s, Jacobs Jacobson's behavior started to get increasingly erratic because his own amphetamine usage had increased. He started working for 24 hours and was seeing up to 30 patients every day. In 1979, he attempted to regain his license after it was revoked in 1975 when the Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs seized his supply. He passed away on December 1st in New York City at the age of 79. So he's kind of the original Dr. Feel Good, which is also a Motley Crue song, which is also kind of why I did this, because I love Motley Crue, and that is a fantastic song. So, anyways, that is it for me today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Sorry, I struggled through this, but my throat is really hurting, and I don't know what's going on. So, I'm just going to end this video. Thank you for watching, and I will have a new video for you guys up on Monday. Bye, guys.